Well, the word that God gave me for you is simply, it's very simple. I'm calling it fathered by God, fathered by God. We're all born into this world broken. Our mothers and fathers do their absolute best to show us love, to show us kindness, to provide for us, to feed us. But sometimes even the best of parents, well, I'd say even the best of parents can't father a human soul fully. Your soul has to be fathered by God. You say, why is it taking so long? Because God is patient. Why isn't it working yet? Why aren't I seeing all the blessing and healing? Because the biggest thing and the most important thing that God wants you to experience is he wants you to experience his love and he wants you to know what he's really like. And he wants to be the father to your soul and grow you up all the way. Hey, we all come from some form of dysfunction because we all came from Adam and Eve. There's no use in blaming your parents. They came from the same parents you came from, Adam and Eve. <laughs> that's why we got to be born again. And that's why we need God to father us. God is going to father you. God is going to reparent you. And it starts today. You know, in John chapter 14, Jesus said something amazing in verse six that we all know this verse probably by heart. But he said something very amazing when he said, I am the way the truth and the life. And those sound like beautiful words, but they can seem so abstract when you when you just read them alone. I'm the way, the truth and the life. It's it's like sounds. It sounds nice, but what is he the way to? What is he the truth about? And what is the life that he comes to bring? Notice what he says in the next part of the verse. No one comes to the father except through me. Because Jesus becomes the sin offering for your sin, for my sin, so that the sins that we've committed and the sin that Adam committed is no longer standing in the way, separating us from God. When Jesus says, I'm the way, he means I'm the way to the father. When Jesus says, I'm the truth, he means he's the truth about what the father's really like. When he says, I am the life, he's saying, I am the life of God. I bring you the life the father intended you to bring. The thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. But I've come to bring you life in abundance to the full till it overflows. But he came to bring us to the father. When he says, I'm the way, he's not just the way to heaven. Yes, he is the only way to heaven. But what is what makes heaven so great? The father, the father is there. Jesus is the way to the father. The goal of salvation is to be restored to the father. The goal of salvation is that God wants his family back. God wants his kids home. God wants his sons and his daughters to be everything that he created them to be. He wants his sons and daughters to receive his inheritance and to show his heart to this broken world that is broken hearted and desperate to find hope and they're they're lost in their way. They're lost in their way. In John chapter five, verse 19, look at what Jesus said. He said something very powerful. He said. Truly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself. Unless it's something he sees the father doing for whatever the father does, the son does in like manner. God is showing us here the blueprint to living is to have a father that we can follow the pattern of, follow the manner of. Jesus himself says, I can do nothing on my own unless it's something I first saw the father doing. No wonder the devil attacks the fatherhood of society. No wonder the devil 
uses entertainment to make fathers look bad. Now, there's now mothers are great and they should always look good because mothers are amazing. And we all got here through one. <laughs> Amen. But it takes a father, too. And God wants us to see his father heart of protection, provision, purpose, destiny, identity. And Jesus himself said, I can't do anything unless I see the father do it. The son does it in like manner. He's saying the son has a model too. the son has a uh, he has footprints in front of him to show Jesus says to show me the way is the father. I only do what the father does for the father loves the son and shows him all things that he himself is doing. And it says in verse 20, and the father will show him greater works than these so that you will marvel. God wants to show himself to you in such a way that you will marvel. The father wants you to know him in such a way that you will marvel. The father wants to show you his love. He wants to show you his power. He wants to show you his greater works so that you will marvel. God wants us to live a life of being amazed by our heavenly father. Being in awe of our heavenly father, being marveled. This doesn't sound like a God of wrath to me. This doesn't sound like an angry God. This sounds like an amazing father. And he is. You know, this world is broken, doesn't have any models, doesn't has very few models to marvel at patterns of fatherhood. The devil has been hard at work to destroy the, the home, to destroy the father, to get the father away from the children. And if a, a, a father's abusive, obviously, that father does need to be away from his children. But you understand the, the breakdown of the fathering of society is why we have the problems that we have in this world. The breakdown of the fatherhood of society is the cause for all the pain and all the trouble and all the hatred and all the anger and all the violence and all of it comes from the breakdown, the brokenness of the fatherhood of a society. There's an island in the Alaskan region that tourists go to where they have this one particular area of a wilderness where you have to go through this marsh to get to the other side. And tourists love to go because of what marks this trail is it's it's a marked trail and it's filled with massive footprints with a stride of about two feet between them. Pressed down into the marsh and making a path through the wilderness, making a way where there was no way. And what is so impressive to the tourists who see this, it's a marked trail and the footprints are created by bears. <laughs> For hundreds of years, those footprints have been there. For as long as bears have been on that island, they have taken that path through the wilderness. And the little cubs, the children bears, follow their elders, putting their little cub feet exactly into the footprints that are already there, exactly into the footprints that are already there. For hundreds of years, this has happened. What is happening is those little cubs are learning the way through the path to the other side, to food, to survival by following the path that the father's footprints has already placed inside that marsh and in that wilderness. Without those footprints, the cub bear would get lost. Without those footprints, the cub bear would die of starvation. But the footprints are there 
because God has put instinct into animals to know how to follow. And we can learn a lot from this path. You see, in life we are born insecure. We need footprints in the journey of life to follow. We need fatherhood to follow. We need footprints to go before us or we'll be lost. We live in a generation of of men and women that are lost themselves and they have children that now are lost also in the way because they haven't found their way yet. There's so many adults who really aren't adults yet. They need to be refathered by God. It's lacking in our world today, this kind of fatherhood, this kind of modeling, this kind of footprints. We live in a time with very little direction. We live in a time where few fathers are truly showing us the way. We need a marked trail like those bears had. We don't need more rules. We don't need more formulas. We don't need more to do lists. We need a sure path marked by the fatherhood of God and by men who will rise up and be the fathers that God created them to be, to put the path, to put the footprints in the path, to make the way easy to find for those that come up after us. Do you see the devil attacking that? Do you see society attacking that? Do you see society trying to create new rules, new, new lists, new formulas? But a new list and a new formula isn't going to help that little cub bear. Footprints are big, fatherly footprints that that little cub can put one paw in the big footprint. You see, it's only in Christ that we find our way. It's only when we step into his identity that we find our own identity. It's only when we step into his footprints that we truly find our way, our purpose, our why, our reason to live. It is only in Christ we find out who we are and what we're living for. Step into him today. Step into Christ and know who you are. And you will find the way. Without the path, Without those footprints on the path, the young bears would become insecure, apprehensive, and get lost in the wilderness. And that's what so many people are plagued with, insecurity, and so many different paths they could follow, and so many different directions they could go, so many wrong turns. And God wants to heal you of insecurity. You know what insecurity is? It means to be with apprehension uncertain of yourself, lacking confidence, insecure. You measure yourself compared to others. You you lack this sense of confidence in who you are. Insecurity means to be without a route and without a route. Insecurity means we get our acceptance, our worth from what other people think of us rather than getting our acceptance and our worth from our father in heaven. Insecurity is a gap between who we are, who God says we are, and who we actually feel like we are. There's this gap between who we want to be and who we feel like we already are or we feel like we are. It's a gap between how we want others to see us and how we actually see ourselves. There's this gap, gap between what we've dreamed and what our reality is. It's insecurity it creates insecurity. Where does it come from? The word insecure means to be with apprehension. The word secure means to be without care. You know, you'll be without care. You know, you'll be without anxiety when you know the path. You'll be without anxiety when you're secure in the footprints of Jesus that takes you to the father. 
You know you'll be secure and you'll have a path when you're in Christ. You find out who you are, what you're living for, all anxiety leaves, all care, worry, fear leaves your life. When there's a thousand footprints going in all different directions, that's man, total insecurity, total apprehension, total uncertainty. But when there's just two and they belong to Jesus and we are in him, we find healing. We find carefree living. To be insecure is to be without a route, without a route, without a cure, without sufficient grounds for confidence. Where does insecurity come from? It comes from that persistent sense that we're unaccepted, that we feel rejected somehow. Jesus wants to heal that in you today. Insecurity comes from broken homes, from abusive relationships. Jesus wants to heal you from that today. Insecurity comes from a poor body image because you're comparing yourself to somebody else. And so you hate yourself because you're not as skinny or as tall or as white or as black or as light or as dark as somebody else. And you need to love your body because I got news for you. God loves it. You know why I know that? Because the Bible says your body is his temple. Why would he come to live inside of something he didn't love? He loves your body. Jesus is going to heal you from that insecurity today. We feel overshadowed by others that creates insecurity. We're preoccupied by people who seem smarter than us, more successful than us, wealthier than us, better looking than us. And that creates doubt and insecurity. Jesus is going to heal you of that today. Who's ready for some healing today? We need a map. We need a marked trail. So many Christians are fighting the battle that they don't even know where it comes from. Whether it's in addictions or violence, anger, marital problems, behavioral problems, emotional problems. Where do these come from? They all come from that root of brokenness that we call the father fracture. That somewhere along life, our parents weren't able to fix whatever was broken in us because maybe they weren't able to fix what was broken in them. So we have broken people having more broken people, giving birth to more broken people and filling the world with more broken people. What's the solution? What's the answer? When 80 percent of extreme criminals come from fatherless homes, 70 percent of high school dropouts grew up in fatherless homes, 85 percent of people that are in prison grew up in fatherless homes, 90 percent of youth, adolescent criminals, fatherless homes, 90 percent of kids in gangs come from fatherless homes. When a mother comes to faith in Jesus Christ, which is a beautiful thing, 15 percent of the family follows her study show. When a child comes to Christ in a family, 30 percent of the rest of the family follows. But when a father comes to faith in Jesus Christ, studies show the whole family gets saved. So you can see why the devil hates the fathers. Now he hates the mothers, too, and he hates the kids. He hates everybody. He's the hater. But he has a strategy. But God's bigger. God's plan is better. Kids from fatherless homes have five times the suicide rate, 30 times more likely to run away, 14 times more likely to commit rape, nine times more likely to drop out of high school, 20 times more likely to end up in prison, two to three times more likely to be poor. Yet our society tells us it must be something else that is the cause to all these problems. It couldn't be the lack of fathering. Yes, it's exactly what it is. But God's got that one covered, too, because God's going to father you the rest of the way. We just have to face it. We live in a society of broken brokenness, broken souls, broken souls break things. Broken people break things. 
But Jesus came to heal the broken. Jesus came to show us the Father. Jesus came to bring us to the Father. Jesus came to illustrate for us what the Father's like and why we want to go to heaven to see this glorious Father one day. What makes hell so bad is the Father's not there. What makes heaven so great is the Father's there. This is no judgment against families that are fatherless or kids that haven't had a father or single mothers. This is no slight against them. They know how hard it is to do it all themselves and God bless them for doing it. But men come home. Men come home. Let God father you that insecurity and why you feel you're not sure how to raise your kids, so some people run from that. There's no shame. But God can heal you. Come home, men. Every male within the sound of my voice, let God refather you. That's the best gift you can give to any woman for you to be fathered best gift you can give to your kids for you to be fathered so then you can father them and I get it you fail I get it there's been years that have passed and some people watching you you're like man I blew it God can fix it God's gonna heal you today you know in John chapter 14 verse 8 Philip said to Jesus when Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, no one goes to the Father but through me, Je Philip said something so profound. He said to Jesus, he probably didn't even know how profound this statement is that he's about to say. But we can learn so much from it. He says, Lord, show us the Father. Cause us to see the Father. That is all we ask. And then we shall be satisfied. He's showing us the secret to life satisfaction is to know the Father. It's to know God as Father. It's to see what he's really like and know that he's your dad. And then Philip says, we shall be satisfied. Boy, everything in life we do is done to be satisfied. You eat a meal to satisfy you. You're in a relationship to satisfy you. I'm not just saying that it's the only reason, but you get what I'm saying, that we do what we do to be satisfied. Nobody does drugs to be dissatisfied. No one gets addicted to something because it doesn't satisfy them. It does satisfy temporarily. But the Father truly satisfies, truly fills the heart, truly he heals the cracks in the foundation of your soul. The Father will give you true happiness and bring you complete life satisfaction. Philip said, show us the Father. Wow, when I saw this years ago, I said, that's everything right there. That's it. Everything's right there. Lord, show us the Father. Jesus did not come to point out your sin. He came to die for it, but he came to show you the Father so that then he could die for your sin so that you could go and be with the Father forever. What Father? The Father that Jesus showed what he's like. Because every time he healed somebody, he showed us the Father's heart. Every time he fed somebody, he showed us the Father's heart. Every time Jesus opened the eyes of the blind, he showed us the Father's heart. Every time he touched a broken life and restored it, he was showing us the Father's heart. Every time he raised the dead, he was showing us the Father's heart. Every time he forgave the prostitutes, he was showing the Father's heart. Every time he met a need, he was showing the Father's heart. Show us the Father, Lord. That is all we ask. Then 
we shall be satisfied. God's about to give you some satisfaction. He's about to heal you everywhere you've been hurting. He's about to heal you from your insecurities. He's about to heal you from everything that's been broken inside of you. This is our Father. This is our God. He's going to satisfy you. Life can't satisfy you. People can't satisfy you. You can't satisfy yourself. But our Father, once you see Him for who He really is, you will then be satisfied. Oh, beloved, Jesus called God Father because Jesus had no fracture in his soul. All our distorted views of God, all the problems in our lives are because of a distorted view of God. Maybe something happened in your upbringing. Maybe you were abandoned. Maybe you were belittled. Maybe your father was angry. Maybe he didn't know how to raise you. Maybe he didn't know how to comfort you. Maybe he didn't know how to teach you, encourage you. Maybe he didn't know how to put those footprints in the wilderness. But God does. He's going to take the baton that your fathers may have dropped and the heavenly father. Jesus put your hand in the hand of the father so you can then run with him and he can heal you love you, fix you, satisfy you. You know, when the prodigal son left home in in Luke chapter 15, verse 11, it says the father had these two sons and the one said in verse 12, right? He said, Lord, he said, Father, just give me what's mine and give me the inheritance in verse 12. In verse 13, look at what it says. Not many days later, the younger son gathered everything he went and went on a journey to a distant country, and there he squandered his estate with loose living. And when he had spent everything, it says in verse 14, isn't it incredible that in verse 12, he's given everything by his father, but only two verses later, he has spent everything. Because as soon as he left his father, he lost his way. As soon as he left his father, he lost his why. As soon as he left his father, he lost his life. He lost himself. He lost his senses. Because when you're separated from your heavenly father, you've lost your, you're you're gonna lose your senses. You're not gonna know what what decisions to make. You don't have those big, bare, footprints in front of you. Isn't it amazing that as soon as he left his father, poverty struck him. As soon as he left his father, he made bad decisions. As soon as he left his father, his life had a downward spiral. He wasted his substance, his time, his talents, his treasures with reckless and loose living. No restraint. Why? One reason. He was separated from his father. But Jesus has given us a way back. Jesus has given us the marked trails back to him. Jesus is the marked trail that leads back to the father. When the son in verse 17 says he finally came to his senses and he's like, hey, when he came to his senses, what what made him lose his senses in three verses? He had lost all his senses and lost all his money. He was separated from his father. That's what happened. He came to his sense, he's like, man, my father, he's, he's hired guys, have more than enough bread. They're not hungry. I'm dying here of hunger without him. I know what I'll do. I'm going to get up and go to my father. Boy, if you ever wanted to know what is the will of God in one sentence, I will arise and go to my father. I will arise and go to my father. All of his bad decisions are about to be put behind him through one decision to get up and go to his father. Wow. All the bad decisions that you've made in your life can go away. They can stop hurting you. They can stop devouring you. They can stop destroying you. 
with one sentence in your life, I will arise and go to my father. And then he quotes some speech he's going to give me, practices the speech that he's going to give his father. I'm going to, oh, my father, I'm no longer worthy to be called. Just make me... Just. Before he can even give his speech, the Bible says in verse 20, and he arose and came to his father, but when he was a great way off, his father saw him. This is what the father is like. This is what your heavenly father is like. He leaves a mark, a marked trail back to him. It's called the gospel. It's called Jesus. The gospel of Jesus is the marked trail that the father leaves for all of his kids. He leaves a mark. I want you to know about the father because the father's going to father you today. He leaves a marked trail back to him. It's called the gospel. It's Jesus. He's the way. You know what else about the father? He believes in you even after you've made all your bad decisions, after you've lost everything, your father still believes in you. Boy, there's something special about when a father believes in their kid. And when the kid feels their father believes in me, this father believed in his son. He's coming back. He was watching. He was waiting. He was looking. And while he was still a great way off, do you feel like you're a great way off of God's will? You're a great way off. You're way off from God's intention. Today you're getting back. God's going to heal that. He believes in you no matter what the current condition of your life is. Next, he's looking for you. It says the father saw him. The son didn't see the father first. First, the father saw the son. It's God looking for you. Your heavenly father is always looking for you. He's always looking for you. He's always got his eye out on you. He's always thinking about you. He's always planning for something good. He's always looking for you. He's always waiting for you. It says, and then it says, and he began to go towards him. His father had compassion. Not only does he see you, not only is he watching for you, not only is he waiting for you, but he feels what you've gone through. It says he had compassion. He he felt love. He felt compassion. He felt empathy. This is what your father has. Whatever you've been through, your father knows it. Whatever you've been through, your father loves you still. Whatever you, wherever you failed, the father still has compassion on you. He sees you and he doesn't say, you stupid kid. He sees you and he has love and compassion and mercy and pity and passion for you. And the Bible says he ran. I want you to know something about your heavenly father. He doesn't walk towards you. He doesn't move slowly towards you. You. He's in a hurry to hug you. He's in a hurry to welcome you. He's in a hurry to come get you. He's running. He's running. You can run, but he's going to run after you. You can run away, but he's going to keep running and keep running and keep running until he puts his arms around your dirty soul and falls on your dirty neck and kisses you. And the Bible says when it uses the word kiss there, he kissed him over and over and over. The first kiss was, I love you. The second kiss was, I forgive you. The third kiss was, I want you. The fourth kiss was, your home. And the son, the son starts his speech. He's been practicing this speech for the last few days. As soon as he ran out of money, comes to his senses, man, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to say this and I'm going to say this. And this is how so much Christianity is. 
you got to say this and you got to do this and you got to do this and you got to do this and he starts giving his speech and the father isn't hearing any of it verse 21 the son said oh father i've sinned against heaven and before he could finish his sentence before he could finish everything he memorized because we see it was a lot longer than this the father oh i'm not listening to any of that and he says to his servants bring the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and put the shoes on his feet and bring the fatted calf and kill it let us eat and be merry for this is my son who is dead and he's alive again this is my son he was lost and he's found and they began to be merry that's called Mary means being satisfied. Show us the Father. That's all we ask. And then we'll be satisfied. This son, for the first time, really understood what his father was like. And he never wanted to be away from him ever again. He celebrated him. His father celebrated his son. This is what I want you to hear what the father's really like. He leaves a marked trail for you back to him through the gospel, through Jesus. He believes in you no matter how many times you've given up on yourself. He's looking for you, verse 20 said. The father sees you. He's always looking. He's always waiting for you. He's patient. The Bible says, you say, why hasn't Jesus come back yet? He's patient for the, the rest of the souls that he wants to give another chance to. He runs, he has compassion on him and love and passion, and then he runs to him. The Father is always moving towards you. He's never moving away from you. Even if you start moving away from him, he moves towards you always, always, always the Father is moving towards you. God, you get a hold of this, you'll never be the same. He's always moving towards you. Man, it just takes all the anxiety away. It takes all the fear. It takes all the fear of judgment and the fear of wrath. The Father is moving towards you today. He feels deeply for you. He kisses you. It's relationship. It's closeness. It's intimacy. The first kiss, I love you. The second kiss, I forgive you. The third kiss, I want you. The fourth kiss, I restore you. The fifth kiss, you're home. You're home. He makes a home for the lonely. I want to ask you today, you're not home yet. You're watching today and you've never really received Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. You haven't taken that, you haven't followed that marked trail that the Father left for you, which is Jesus. Why don't you invite him into your life right now? Why don't you just pray right now, out loud, if you're not sure that you're going to heaven? Why don't you just pray right now? Just say, dear God, I invite Jesus into my life as my Savior and Lord. I believe Jesus died for my sins and rose from the dead. I believe Jesus' blood was shed so that I could become your child. And God says one thing to you, if you just prayed that prayer, you're home, you're home, you're home. Now you that just prayed that prayer, I want you to join with the rest of us that are going to pray this prayer of healing. I want everybody in the Life Changers family, in the global community, I want everybody to pray this. Say, Father, just say, Father, Father me, 
Father, Father me. Just pray that, Father, Father me. Heal my brokenness. Heal my insecurity. Heal my soul from the fears, the abuses, the unhealthy emotions. Heal my soul, Father, from my broken dreams. Heal my soul, Father, from the disappointment of my life. Heal my soul from rejection. Heal my soul from insecurity and flood my soul with your fatherhood, your father's heart, with your love. Thank you for restoring me. In Jesus' name. And today I just declare over you and I pray over you. Father, heal the broken, heal the fractures, heal the wounds, heal the emptiness. Jesus, you are the healer. And Lord, waken us to the why that we're here. For it is in Christ we find out who we are and what we're living for. Lord, awaken each person's identity as a son or daughter of God so that you can conceive in them their destiny. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much for letting me in your home today. Thank you so much for letting me share my heart with you today. I hope you feel the heart of God, and I hope the heart of God is healing you. Happy Father's Day once again to all the dads. You carry the power to heal our culture, our society. Come home. Men, come home. May the churches not be known in the, around the world as just the women, but let it be the men and the women, the boys and the girls, all colors, all nationalities, all ethnic groups. We're united as brothers and sisters through the heart of our Heavenly Father. And everything is going to be all right. I love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow on our daily bread if you join me. I'll see you Wednesday night for a Wednesday night Bible study. If you need anything in between, you let us know. We're here for you. Don't forget, fathers, get those free gifts at lifechangeschurch.com slash dad. And don't forget, global family. Sign up and join the church globally online, lifechangeschurch.com slash global. And I'll see you soon. Love you guys.